five day challenges. So first, let me kind of um, break down what that is for your listeners that may not know. So basically, all it is is just a five day of online event that you have that really gives your uh, potential client or your client customer an opportunity to work with you for a period of time and to be able to experience how you operate and for you to be able to instill confidence in them that you can actually help them accomplish their ultimate goal. Welcome to Spaghetti on the Wall, where we throw ideas, see what sticks, and nurture those that do. I'm your host, Armando LeDuc, an actor, entrepreneur, and coach, giving you insights that light up your world. We're here to explore the realms of business, marketing, and life, serving up a shot of inspiration with every episode. Ready to make ideas stick and grow them into something great? Let's dive in. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on when you are consuming this podcast. Spaghetti on the wall, back with another one. Mark Todd, what is up? What's going on, man? Pleasure to be here. Dude, let me just let let me just preface this podcast by by talking about this mastermind that we both uh attended and and joined called Flight Club. And um when you get to meet somebody like Mark, you know you're in you, you know you're in a, a a class of kind of geniuses. You know the the way you guys the way you guys operate, the way you guys think and 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 put the marketing mind thing together. And I'm just like I'm, I'm I was blown away. So I'm Thank super you. happy to finally have you on and, and really get into the nitty gritty of what it is that you do and how you help you know coaches and you know, experts and thought leaders and people like that. So um, give us some background and then I've got, you know, a ton of questions for you. Okay. Some background on me or um, the business. Yeah. So I am a natural born entrepreneur. I've been running my own businesses for the last almost 30 years now, like maybe about 25 years or something like that. Um, That's all I've done all my life. Uh, My first successful business was a marketing, a printing and marketing company that I really just kind of stumbled into. Um, built that up, uh, was a multi-million dollar business. Then I got into real estate when the market collapsed back in 08, 09, bought tons of real estate here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and then around 2014, I retired from my marketing business and just said that I wanted to just like, get into speaking and helping people and whatnot. And Um, Then I started working with athletes, um, basically doing like mental training. I would travel all over the country, work with different universities and high schools, uh, putting together uh, peak performance programs for the athletes. And then in 2017, I kind of stumbled into this internet marketing thing. And it's kind of funny because I initially, that was one of the reasons why I retired from my business is that this internet thing was coming around and I was like, man, I don't want to have to learn something new. And, um, and then it just sucked me in, you know, and now I work with, uh, coaches, um, course creators, consultants, experts, and I help them to build out their masterminds, their coaching programs, um, their boot camps, and everything in between. That's awesome. And so when we met, you were, uh, you were specifically talking about, a five day challenge and that you guys created your own mastermind. What's the name of the mastermind? It's called Mad Events. Oh, it's, actually, it's called Quantum Leap Mastermind. The name of cool. our company is called Mad Events. Yeah. And so it's basically teaching, you know, teaching people how to run these seven figure five day challenges. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. So we actually do a little bit more than that. Um, we teach people how to do online and offline events. So uh, whether it's a a small boot camp, it's a workshop, or it could be a webinar or a um, five-day challenge. But five-day challenge is the thing that me and my business partner, Pedro, um, probably is well known for, you know? And so talk to me about five-day challenges and and, and what, (coughs) why are they so successful? So... Five day challenges. So first, let me kind of um, break down what that is for your listeners that may not know. So basically, all it is is just a five day of online event that you have that really gives your uh, potential client or your client customer an opportunity to work with you for a period of time and to 
be able to experience how you operate and for you to be able to instill confidence in them that you can actually help them accomplish their ultimate goal. Um, the reason why five day challenges, I believe, work so well, especially if you're and, and I think that there's a bunch of variables, right, depending on um, what you're selling, who you're selling it to and um, and the price that you're selling it for will determine which is the best way for you to actually sell your particular product to a customer. I think what happens with a lot of people, the biggest mistake that I see a lot of entrepreneurs make is that they'll look at someone else that's in their industry and say, okay, this person, he's selling this product by a webinar, so I need to come up with a webinar and I need to sell that too, right? And I think that's the wrong way to look at it. Um, I've actually, and I'm working on a book right now what, that's called um, Who to Sell, How to Sell, and When to Sell, right? And basically uh, what it does is it breaks down the 13 different factors that determine who you should sell to and, and how you should sell it to them and why you should sell it to them and whatnot, right? And I think that where people make mistakes is that like if they're trying to sell a higher ticket product, so anything that would probably say is like maybe from $500 to $1,000 on up, especially if they're selling it online, um, you need time to sell that to the customer, right? You can't go in there and just do a, a, a 90 minute webinar and sell a $5,000 product to someone, especially if it's a cold audience. If it's people that have already bought from you before, then yeah, you can do that, you know, if they have confidence and faith in you that, that, that you're gonna provide for them. But if it's a completely new audience, you just it's, that's just not going to work. You may sell a couple. You may sell maybe to like 1% or 2% of those people that are just in need at that point in time. So they don't care. They're just in need and um, and they need to buy something. But you're not going to be able to uh, 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 make the type of money that you could make if you uh, unless you are giving the buyer a longer period of time to get to understand you. To, to, to know what you can do for them, how you can help them and convince them that they can actually do it as well. So are you helping them put together the five-day challenge as well? Yeah, everything. So we're doing, we're going in and we do the, we come up with the concept of what we're going to base the challenge around. We will um, uh, uh, do all the marketing Right. And there's a lot of pre-marketing and a lot of pre-research that actually goes into it to make sure that whatever it is that you're offering is what your audience wants. One of the the uh, another big mistake that a lot of businesses make is that they assume that they know what the audience wants and what we, we never, ever make any assumptions. Right. So the first thing that we do when I take on a new client is I might spend the first 30 days just understanding the market, you know. I think it was Abraham Lincoln that had a quote that said, if I had eight hours to chop down a cherry tree, I'm going to spend the first six sharpening my ax. Well, I look at sharpening my ax is going out there and doing research. So what I want to do is, for instance, let's say you're in the real estate niche. I'm going to go on. I'm probably going to start with Instagram. I'm going to go on Instagram and find all of the real estate influencers right on Instagram. Then I'm and then I'm going to go to their bios and I'm going to see what they're offering, right? Then I'm going to go over to Facebook, do the same thing. Then I'm going to go find all the Facebook groups. There's probably thousands of them, at least hundreds, if not thousands of them, that have uh, uh, that are centered around real estate investing. I'm going to join all of those groups. I'm going to and and obviously I'm not doing all of this on my own. I have a team of researchers that helps me to do this, but I like to go in and I'm going to study all that stuff. I'm going to understand like what's going on in the market, what people are gravitating to, what other influencers or real estate coaches are selling. I'm going to go to YouTube. I'm going to go to um, uh, Reddit. I'm going to, I have special tools that I use. Um, they're called spy tools where I can go in and plug in any one of these platforms and see everybody that's advertising on this platform. So if I wanna see all of the real estate ads that are going out on Instagram that have something to do with real estate, I can use these platforms, these spy tools to see what everybody is advertising. So I'm gonna spend at least the first 30 days just understanding the market, you know what I'm saying? 
understanding mm -hmm. what's going on, understanding the pain points, understanding what people are looking for, understanding what my other competitors are offering, right? And then from there, we sit down and put together what we think is the best offering. And then we'll go ahead and start to do the marketing to attract people into this challenge. You know, another way to look at these challenges, see, I look at it like um, if you, I, 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 you're, I know you're married, uh, but like if imagine if when you first met your wife, right, you went to like a nightclub or something or a lounge or a bar, or whatever, you couldn't go up to her and say, hey, how you doing? Uh, my name is Armando. And um, would you like to marry me? Right. She probably would have thought you were you would have thought you were creepy or something like that. Like maybe that works because I've heard people do that before. But I don't nine, think it does. Yeah, huh? <laughs> or it doesn't last. <laughs> right. It doesn't last. <laughs> right. So um, um, 99 times out of 100, that generally doesn't work. Right. You have to work up to that. So you may go up to her and introduce yourself and then buy her a drink and have a conversation get her phone number, then then the next day, give her a call and maybe take her out. Then the next day, and you know what I'm saying? Until she has enough confidence that you are the person that she wants to spend the rest of her life with. Well, it works the same way in business, right? You have to convince a client. See, in order for a customer to buy from you, I think three things needs to happen, right? Once you have to convince them that you are who you say you are, right? Because we all know that there's so many frauds out there on the internet. Everyone claims to they go borrow their their friend's Lamborghini and take a take a video next to it and whatnot, right? So you have to first convince them that you have done what you say you've done and you can help them, right? Then the second thing you have to convince them is that okay, so the person will look at you and say, "All right, I'm on him. I know what he's doing, but." Has he helped anybody else? Because maybe he came out the womb an expert at podcasts or an expert at video production, right? So you got to convince them that not only have you helped yourself, right, to become one of the best in the world at what you do, but you've helped other people do it, right? And after that, then the third thing that you got to convince them is not only are you who you say you are, not only have you helped other people, but you can help them, which is the hardest thing because a lot of us carry around all sorts of baggage from things that happened to us in our childhood. So maybe we had a teacher that said, man, you're going to be nothing. You, you're going to, you're going to end up in jail one day. Maybe we had a, um, a, uh, 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 what is it? Uh, uh, Bible study. I mean, uh, um, you know, a, the person that teaches you at church or whatever. Maybe right. it was a principal, whoever, right? So a lot of us, even though we think we have a lot of uh, self-esteem and self-confidence, we generally don't, right? And that's the reason why most people never, ever take action. It's not about what it is that they're doing. It's just their beliefs that they have about themselves deep down inside. So you got to convince them that no matter where they are at, you can help them get to their goal. That's the, that that's actually the definition of a coach. A coach is someone that takes someone from where they are to where it is that they want to go. So you have your work cut out for you and there's no way that you can do that in a in a in a 30 minute you know, a 30 minute talk online or a 90 minute talk online. Especially if it's a um higher ticket um product, you know? Maybe you could do that for something that's like a thousand or two thousand dollars or whatever, but when you're talking about um, something that costs, you know, maybe more than that, five thousand or ten thousand dollars, it's a big step for a lot of people, and yeah. um, and you need time to show them that you are that you're going to show up for them every day. You know, have you all done a five day challenge for yourselves? No, we haven't. We okay. haven't. And the reason being, and and that's such a great question, right? And I struggled with this because I was like. Um, there's a couple of reasons why we haven't done a five day challenge um, uh, for ourselves yet. For one, when we do do a challenge, we wanted our existing students to be able to watch over us and to see how we actually go about doing it. So right now, what we're doing to get clients is we're reaching out to our existing pool of people that we our existing audience. Right. And because of the results that my partners had, who was able to take a business from $1 million a year in revenue to $40 million a year in revenue in, in less than three years. Um, 
because of his accolades, we're able to attract people in. Because of the accolades that I've I've had and the success that I've had with the people that I've worked with. Like one of my customers, one of the very first customers I worked with back in 2022, had never he was in the real estate niche, right? He was teaching people how to build houses from the ground up. And this is when real estate was very, very difficult because prices were sky high. And I was able to take him. He had no, when he came to me, he had absolutely nothing at all, no list or very small list. Um, never did a coaching program. Didn't even have one built out yet. Never did an offline event or anything like that. And the very first event that we did, that I did all the marketing for, um, we and I helped him construct everything. I helped him construct his entire coaching program. We did seven hundred over seven hundred thousand, close to seven hundred and fifty thousand in three days. That's impressive. So I helped that guy build a a which would turn into a million dollar, a multi million dollar business, you know, um, inside of a month. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, so. I know you can't go through like the secret sauce, I guess. And maybe this, there is no secret sauce. It's just basically like, you know, getting your research done and making sure that, you know, all your T's are crossed and the dots are, you know, I's are dotted. I mean, it might be that at that simple. I mean, I know when we're, I know that, that when we're doing like, you know, content for, for our, our clients, you know, it's, it's optimization, but it's really like the, 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 the heavy lifting of actually doing it on a consistent basis and making it happen. So yeah, yeah. Maybe you can Honestly, talk. Um, there really isn't any secret sauce, you know? Um, I know that. And, and it's so funny because um, we, we always think that there's a secret sauce, right? Like anytime I'm going through someone's program or anything, I'm always looking for the secret sauce. And right. what you realize is that generally there isn't one. There's just things that you need to do, which most people are already familiar with. But, like, you know, I'll tell you what my secret sauce is. And this is why I'm never, ever worried about um, sharing information with people. I'm not one of those guys that try to hold anything back or anything like that. I just completely don't. I was just talking with one of my clients today um, a little earlier. And I was telling and, and he was just saying and he's actually one of our done for you clients. Right. Where we go in and do everything. And we do something a little bit differently that I've never seen anybody do for, before. We actually launched two businesses at one time. We launched our coaching company where we help entrepreneurs and, and it's a considerable fee for that, right? Um, we, we teach them what we everything that we know to help them to build their business with challenges. And then we also have a done for you agency where we come in and we essentially do all of the work, right? Um, and that is a, 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 a very considerable fee um, as well. And right now we're on waiting list for our done for you agency. We're not even taking on any clients right now. Anyone that wants to um, potentially hire us, um, they got to wait, you know? Right. Um, anyway, I was talking with one of our done for you clients and what we what we've done. Um, which actually my partner came up with this idea is that we allow all of our done for you clients, we give them a complimentary admission into our one year coaching program, which is a 30 K, um, which is generally a 30 K investment. So that just shows you our done for you clients are paying way more than 30 K because we're comping them that. Right. And what I was telling the client today, he was just, he was telling me how he enjoys because we do calls every Wednesday. And he was like, man, I'm learning so much from you guys. Oh, man, it's so amazing. And, that's, and, and what I was telling him, I said, listen, man, my goal is that when we've come to the end of our journey of working together, I want you to become a better marketer. I want you to become a great marketer. So I'm going to share everything I have with you so that you become a great monitor, marketer. I'm not one of those people that's like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to see most other businesses would never, ever do something like that because they're afraid to share their, their secrets or their techniques with yeah. their clients because they feel that the clients are going to leave them and go somewhere else. And here's what I realized. It doesn't matter what you do. You could be the greatest um, person in the world debate, you know, to bring them millions of dollars. If they're going to leave, they're going to leave. You know what I'm right. saying? You can't, you can't prevent that from happening. Um, and there's a million reasons why they may leave and it may have nothing to do with the results that you bring them. Right. Um, so for me, I've just always been that type of a person where I'm going to share everything with you. I'm going to, I'm not going to leave anything out on the field. I'm, I'm going to let it all hang. 
right? And people are going to do what they're going to do. And I'm never worried about that because I think that the thing that helps me the most, what I would say is my secret sauce, is that I understand buyer behavior um, better than most other marketers that are out there, right? I don't go in and just follow what everybody else does because there's a million reasons why something may work for someone else but may not work for you, right? And I understand that. So I go into it with a blank slate and then I figure out what I think is going to work for the audience that I'm working with. And I'm always going to make the, I generally don't make any assumptions, but the assumption that I'm going to make is that the audience knows nothing about me. They, I have no credibility to them. So whatever it is that I construct, I, I keep all of that in mind, right? I don't take, I don't, I don't, I don't take for granted, not granted, but I don't assume that they know me already and they've known what I've done and they know my history and they're ready to buy from me. So talk to me about buyer behavior. Buyer behavior, you know, it's just, and, and you know, it's the easiest way to learn um, about buyer behavior is just to watch your own interactions when you're on the internet, when you're scrolling on Instagram, what's going through your head right? What makes you stop on a post, right? We're all there scrolling our lives away, scrolling, scrolling, scroll. What makes you, what, what makes you stop and pay attention to what's going on, right? And, um, and I think that, cause I probably spend way too much time on Instagram or, and all these social media platforms, but a lot of it honestly is, um, is me just really trying to understand the market, understanding what's going on, um, understanding what's grabbing people's attention, what grabbed my attention, you know, what causes me to buy when, when I click on something and I go over to their page, what made me stop, right? What made me want to stop what I'm doing, pull out my wallet and give that person some money, you know? And I spend a lot of time just really studying and analyzing that. And, um, and which has helped me to become, I, I, I coined this term, um, a buy, buyer behaviorist, right? Because that, that's what I do is I study buyer behavior, you know? So give me some uh, give me some insight into that. Like what, you know, what is stopping people from scrolling? Man, um, you know, so funny because I'm doing a training on that tomorrow to our mastermind. Um, generally, there are three parts of an ad, right? Um, or, an ad or a piece mm -hmm. of content or whatever um, that you see online. And the first part, there should be three parts. To it. And if you don't have these three parts, more than likely your stuff isn't working. The first part is the hook, right? What's the thing that you're going to show them within the first three or four seconds that's going to grab their attention and stop the scroll, right? Um, the second part is, um, and I, I kind of got this from Russell Brunson, but I've made a little bit of changes. He, he says, hook story then offer right so the hook is that the story is that in between and then the offer is what gets them to click to go and do whatever it is that you want them to do but i changed it up a little bit to hook content because um it may not be a story right um it could be it, when i say content content is the big umbrella and then underneath the content it's it could be a bunch of different things it could be a story it could be a demonstration it could be um, a compilation of different things and whatnot, right? And then, um, and that's what you're, you're, you're in that story, in that middle part, that's what you're telling them to get them interested and to want to take that next step with you. And then the very end, which Russell Brunson says is offer, I call it more um, CTA, call to action, is you telling them what you want them to do after you've, um, after you've given whatever story. Right. So I look at all of that. Right. What what am I going to do to stop people from scrolling? And, and you know, um, a lot of people would do back in the day, like um, clickbait or um, something clickbaity to get people to stop. And you want to do a combination of that, but something that is um, is relevant to whatever it is that you're doing, because if you just say something really crazy just to get people to stop. As they go on, they're going to end up, oh, this is crap, right? And they're going to continue scrolling on. So you want to come up with something that's going to grab their attention, get them to stop, give them some piece of content that is valuable to them, right? Or, or they don't feel like they've wasted their time by watching whatever it is that you're doing. And then you give them some sort of call to action and tell them what they want to do next, you know? 
So for instance, I might do, let's go back to the real estate niche, right? I might say something like um, building a house from the ground up is way easier and way more profitable than rehabbing a house, right? Now, if I'm in the real estate investing niche, right? Um, I'm a real estate investor and I hear that, that's going to that's going to grab my attention because I would I've always thought that, you know, building a house from the ground up was really really difficult, right? And um and you know, fixing a house is a lot easier than actually building a house from the ground up. And what I've kind of come to realize after working with my my old client was that actually building a house from the ground up is is way easier than than trying to rehab something cuz you might be trying to rehab a house that was built in the 1950s and a lot of the parts that that house was built in are are not are no longer made right so you're trying to fit a triangle into a circle you know what i'm saying mm. um and versus building a house from the ground up there's about 10 steps in that process like the first step might be getting the site ready the second step might be digging the foundation the um and 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 putting in the foundation the third step may be doing the framing. The fourth step is building the roof. Five is electrical. Sixth is putting in the plumbing. The seventh is the HVAC. The eighth is, you know, drywalling it. And then, you know, and so on and so on and so on. So mm -hmm. really and truly, you're not going to be doing any of that work, right? All you're going to be doing is finding all the best people that are experienced in doing that particular thing. So all you need to do is find if there's 10 steps in the process, you find the 10 best people that can that can do every one of the steps. And you all you need to know is just who to call and then the order in which all the steps come in cuz you can't bring the guy that does the roofing in before you lay the foundation. So you need right. to know the order versus you go and hand um hire a handyman to um to go in and renovate the house and maybe this guy is good with painting but he's not good with fixing electrical you know what i'm saying so you get yourself into way more problems so conventional thinking would have you think that um that uh um building a house from the ground up is way harder but it actually isn't so again my so i would start off as that as a hook um Building a house from the ground up is 10 times easier and 10 times more profitable than um, than than renovating a house, right? So that's my hook, right? If I'm scrolling and I'm a real estate investor, like, huh? That doesn't make sense. Let me see what he's saying, right? Then now during the ad, I'm going to say um, what a lot of people don't know is that um, there's only 10 steps in building a house from the ground up, right? And, um, and, and, if you understand those 10 steps and the order that they go in and where to find the people to do those 10 steps, then you can build a house easy peasy, a house from the ground up easy peasy, and you could probably make at least six figures on your first deal. If you want to know more information, I put together a special training where I go over all of this. I lay out all the 10 steps so that you're able to do this. Click the button below and come over and watch this small this short training on how i break literally everything down and how i'm able to make six figures on every house i build from the ground up as well as teach my students how to do the same and then that gets them to click if they're in that industry they're going to be ready to click you see what i'm saying yeah is there a difference between creating ads for b2b and b2c uh, I mean, I don't think there is. I don't think there should be because it's the same. You know what I'm saying? It's the same human, right? Um, and you still got to grab their attention. I think one of the biggest one of a, a big mistake that a lot of people make is that they make their ads look like ads, right? And uh, once a person is scrolling and they can tell that it's an ad, this thing called reactance takes place, right? And basically, what reactance is is the the brain is always trying to conserve energy right and the brain says oh we know oh that's an ad skip it and they just keep scrolling right unless they're in extreme pain so 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 for businesses that do do that right they make their stuff look really really addy or whatever they're going to get some sales right but it's it's just kind of like 
if you're just imagine if you're on Instagram, I mean, you're on Facebook and you're scrolling, it's Friday night. You have the worst toothache in the world, right? Your tooth mm -hmm. is killing you and your dentist can't see you um, until Tuesday of the next week. So now you got to go four days with that massive toothache. And anyone that has had a, a bad toothache before, like myself, right? It's the, when, when your tooth is aching, you can't think about anything else. It's just, you're in just extreme pain. You're ready to freaking take all the teeth out of your mouth yourself, right? So if someone is looking for your solution and they're just in extreme pain, then they don't really care about your, um, what dental school you went to. They don't care what part of town you're in. They don't care how much you charge. All they want to do is get out of that extreme pain. So I think that the way that most businesses sell online, they only cater to that person that's just in such extreme pain that they're just like, here's my wallet. Just take whatever. Just get me out of this pain, right? But there's a lot more. That's only going to be about 1% to 2% of the audience that you could potentially reach, right? Wow. Now, what if your content was good enough that you can get 10% of the people that see your thing? Now you can increase your revenue by like five times just by understanding how, what is going on in the buyer's head and being able to present something really, really good to them that grabs their attention and makes them want to learn more about you or your business. I like it. Have you guys done uh, ads for your marketing company? Um, no, we haven't run any ads for it. We're creating it right now. To be honest with you, we have, we have three done for you clients that we're working with right now. And we've been just focused on doing that, you know, yeah. um, because we can't even take on any more um, at this present time right now. You know, that's sure. going to change because as, as we go in and run their campaigns for them and run their challenges, then, you know, some of them may not be ready to run a challenge again for six months, a year, maybe three months. So then we'll take on more clients. But, you know, fortunately, we actually are going to because what we're going to do is we're going to put out a course. Um, uh, instead of like right now to work with us, you'd have to make a very sizable investment, right? Um, to come in, whether you're going to join our coaching program or our, uh, done for you, um, services. But what I want to do is I want to be, because part of this isn't about just making a ton of money, right? I, I've made millions of dollars over the last 20, 25 plus years that that's nothing to me anymore. Right. But it's about really trying to help businesses, um, grow to the next level. And everyone may not be able to afford our higher ticket investment. And obviously we can't afford to work with, because I'm not trying to work with 30,000, you know, I'm not trying to work with 50 people at one time in the done for right. you agency. So we are in the process of putting together a course, the very same course that everyone in our uh, mastermind um, is going to get and putting that out there and see if we can help some people like that as well. You know, so once we get that finished up, then we'll probably start putting out ads for ourselves. I love it. Yeah, I love it, man. I love what you guys are doing. Um, tell people where they can find you, man. All right. So the best place to find me, um, you can email me. And my email address is mark, M-A-R-K, at mtcmg.com. That's mark at mtcmg.com. Or to just message me on Instagram. Um, my profile on Instagram is Mark, M-A-R-K-I-Z, like is. I-S wasn't available, so I got creative and did I-Z, marketing, M-A-R-K-E-T-I-N-G. So Mark nice. is with a Z, marketing on Instagram. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Guys, if you're listening and you guys are wanting to start a five-day challenge, you guys need help taking it to the next level. Yeah. Mark is like I said, a genius, um, has done it before and is going to do it again. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, and, and let me say this about challenges. I, 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 sometimes I talk so much, I get, I get ahead of myself and, um, could you, I don't think I fully had answered this question. You know, like the benefits of a five day challenge, what a five day challenge does is really allows you as a business owner to bring in tons of new clients all at one time. Right. So instead of, um, you going out there, the traditional, it's like you go out there, you get a lead, you get this lead and you talk to them on the phone and you're trying to convince them to buy your product. And, and that process may last a year, right? Before they actually buy, if they actually buy from you. A five day challenge allows you to bring in tons of new prospective clients, right? Take them across a journey over the course of five days, showing them, you're not necessarily teaching them 
whatever it is that you may be trying to sell them or service that you do for them. But you want what, what you want to do is you want them to leave one understanding how you work, right? Two, um, understanding that you're the best or one of the best in the world at what you do, and then giving them the confidence that if they come through you, you can help them get to where it is that they want to get. So over the course of, and I'll give you just some, um, these are some stats from the last challenge uh, that I did. Um, we were able to get the client, we promoted the challenge for about three weeks. We were able to to get 1,538 people to sign up for the challenge, right? Whereas wow. the last one that the client had before that, he had 150. So we were able to go in and 10X the amount of people that signed up. Of those 1,538 um, um, new leads that have come in, because you're collecting all of their information. So even though we know that some of the people may not show up to the challenge, some of the people may not buy, maybe they're just not ready yet, right? But but keep in mind now, all these leads are people that could potentially become customers um, down, uh, down the line in the future. So, um, and if you know what you're doing and you set the challenge up right, you can make enough money on the front end to pay for all these leads, right? What's the biggest challenge or obstacle for any business? Getting leads, right? Yeah. So most people struggle with that, right? And most businesses pay tons of money to get leads. Well, the way that we structure our challenges, we're able to make all that money back on the front end. So for instance, um, we spent on that particular campaign I was just telling you about, I think we spent about three or four thousand dollars on ads right um to get those 1500 people that signed up for the challenge well we made i think twenty five thousand dollars on the front end right and that for those of your client um for those of your listeners that not sure uh, or don't understand what i mean by front end and back end front end is the money that you make before the actual challenge even starts so what we'll do is We'll offer like some sort of a VIP package. So even though the challenge is free, and there's a bunch of different ways you could do challenges. Some ways is where you are, um, um, you charge for it, and some ways you 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 actually run the challenge for free. But when you run the challenge for free, you may have an, a VIP and a platinum VIP upsell. So we'll make the money, even though everybody only maybe ten percent of the audience may sign up for VIP. Um, we still make enough money from the VIP registrants that covers all of our upfront fees of the challenge. And then over the course of the five days, you're bringing them along, bringing them along and showing them whatever it is that you're, you're teaching them, whatever. And then at the end of the five days, you're giving the people that want to work with you further um, an offer and an opportunity to work with you. Not everybody that joins the challenge will, right? But some of the people that do, they're like, okay, you know, I had a great experience. Let me, I want to continue working with you to accomplish my goal. So we were able to sell a $3,000 program. We sold 109 people, I think 108, 109 people. So we That's ended amazing. up doing on a five day challenge close to over 350,000 on a five day challenge, right? So inside of a week, we were able to do that. But then, but that's not even the best part. The sweet part was that everybody that joined the the, the $3,000 program at the end of the challenge, we gave them a free ticket to the client's big event, live event that he has every single year, which was gonna be three months after the challenge ended. So all of those people got a free ticket, which would normally cost anywhere between 500 and $1,000 right? To come to this event. And at the event, that's when the client sells his um, his higher ticket program. And he had a, I think a 25K program, a 40K program, and a 100K program. And awesome. at that live event, um, he was able to make $2 million. And that was based off of all the people that came to the challenge. So the wow. challenge in effect helped that client make close to $2.4 million. There you have it. There you have it. I'm a believer. Um, Mark, I appreciate it. And and they can follow you on Instagram. You're posting yeah. you Mark, got YouTube and all of that. Yeah, I'm not really on YouTube that, that heavy. The, the platform that I'm probably on the most, and I don't even really post a lot of stuff now. I think I'm going to change that um, and get back into posting um, more. 
but um, they can follow me. But I'm always on Instagram because I'm always looking. I'm always researching, looking at what's going on in the market. Being that I have about, um, I have three done for you clients right now. I'm not only just looking for marketing materials myself, but I'm looking in their industry. Like one's in real estate, one's in spirituality, and the other one is in high ticket sales. So I'm I'm getting ads. You know, and I'm always looking at the people, their competitors and whatnot. So I'm multitask. But so I, I spend a lot of time on Instagram and that's probably the best place for them to um to to message me. I love it, man. Yeah. Hey, Mark, uh a pleasure as as, as always. Thank you. I appreciate you. you being here. Man, I appreciate and the opportunity for um to allow me to speak with your audience. You know, hopefully I shared something with them that will help them be able to go to the next level. Yeah, you know, one of the things that uh, one of the speakers at the conference was talking about that, like just hit home for me was, you know, sloppy execution is better than perfect pr procrastination. You right. Know? Right. And it's, right. you know, it's one of those things that like, you just, just, just pull the trigger, just get started, Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah, and then find the people like you that can really take it to the next level, you right. know, cause there might be people there, you know, a lot of people that suffer with imposter syndrome going, man, do I really know what I'm talking about? Do, do I have a message to share and be like, yeah, absolutely you do. Yeah. 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 No, man, if you've done whatever it is that you've said that you've done, then you can help other people do it. You know, yeah. now the only people that should have imposter syndrome is the people that are frauds, right? They, they, they didn't do what they, 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 hundred they, they watched a YouTube video. And now they want to try to teach it as well. But if you've actually done it, then you should never ever have imposter syndrome, you know? And just always realize that, man, there's somebody out there right now that you're the answer to their prayers. There's somebody out there that needs your help right now. You know what I'm saying? That they are not gonna be able to be helped until you decide that you're ready to take action and get your stuff out there. So if you don't, you're actually a very selfish human being, you know? You're a very yeah. selfish human being, and 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 you're what do they call it? like those people that like pain, <laughs> with a bond, whatever. Masochist, right? You're one yeah. of the yeah. You're watching people. There's people out there that are in pain because you haven't decided to put your product out there yet. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Always inspiring, man. Thank you. Always Thank inspired. You, Thank you for the opportunity. And again, you know, any of your um, listeners want to know more about anything, just just reach out to me. One hundred percent. That's Mark Todd, everybody. And that was Spaghetti on the Wall brought to you by Leduc Entertainment for all of your podcasts, social media needs. We got you. And you can always catch us on Spotify, Apple Music. You're probably listening to it right now. So keep listening and we'll see you all next time.